in today's tutorial it's something we've all wondered about we are learning how to paint space marine eyes exactly like that in a way that doesn't matter if you make loads of mistakes welcome to the artist hopers video today we are going to be painting this guy's baby little eye let's see if we can show that on here we've seen it on models like the black templar a lot of people are asking exactly how I go about doing eyes. I'm doing it in red, but you could swap all these colors for green or anything like that. If you like my suggestions as to what colors you could use to do this really nicely in a yellow, blue, whatever it is you like, then do let us know below and let us know what you think of the tutorial. Please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified for future content. Thank you. Okay, so stage one of our eyes is gonna be my fist on red. Obviously you can use exactly the same steps with a green or a blue or whatever else you prefer. I'm choosing Mrs. Stone Red for this one because it covers extremely well. So I would say whatever color you're using, particularly if it's going over black, it is well worth choosing something that does cover nicely. So I'm gonna get in there and use my brush from the side. And with this step, you're just aiming to fill in the eye entirely. Don't worry if it does end up going into the recesses. Obviously, if you can just hit the raised areas of the actual eye itself, then Go for it, but I'm showing you a way to get around that kind of ever-present issue of um, it seeping into these areas. You can get away with a couple of washes and this will become a glow. So it is important to get a lovely flat blaze coat. So a couple of steps might be required for that, even with the color that covers as well as my fist on red. There we go. Okay, so for the second stage, I'm gonna grab some Nolan oil here, and this is just gonna be put generally in the area of the eye. Now, this is what lets you get away with that kind of overspill that you get in the eye sockets and just fixes all those details. So we're gonna repeat our fist on red, this time aiming to very carefully hit the middle bit of the eye. I do this with wipes so you can, even if you don't get there, and you take a few steps to be in contact with it, this makes it less likely that you over-reg it, kind of run into the recesses. Our next step is Wild Rider, and for this I've turned our eye upside down. Now this is the step that kind of goes into the center of the eye and the bottom of it. So following on with our highlights, we're gonna be using Troll Slayer. There's gonna be a tiny, tiny amount of this one. This one goes, is basically a smaller version of the step we just did. Just hitting that very center and very bottom of the eye, the tiny highlight. All of this technique is based around ways for people who don't have the steadiest hands or the most confidence or the most practice to be able to basically get away with murder. So what we're gonna be doing here is making a little wash of Armour Fist on Red that we've still got in our palette. And then to neaten up and fix this, again, turning it upside down to really help out with this, I'm gonna be taking my fist on red and we're gonna push it across the steps we've just done and concentrate it towards the back of the eye. I try not to get it in the recesses. I've just gone in and looked at my brush to kind of get that overflow. But you're aiming to cover up any mistakes you've had that kind of go outside of that nice little crescent that we're looking to employ there to use the lighting effect. Okay, so we're jumping onto Fire Dragon Bright, and the aim for this is to put the tiniest line on. So I'd say this is the most delicate stage actually because the white stage is a dot. This one is a line. So working swiftly, any mistakes can be wiped off with a wet brush. We can work around any slip ups we have and we can use the physical shape of the model to help us doing so. So any overflow, we've got a helpfully recessed area. Using the oil again, we can just run into recesses and wash them around this. And this pretty much makes this process uh, way more reliable because you become less fallible. While you make loads of mistakes, it doesn't matter as long as you know that you can fix them nice and easily. And it's just nice knowledge to have at the back of your mind. Equally, if you want to water it down, you can see me taking some of it off there. You can take it out and you can just push it towards the back of the eye and that'll darken it. 
let transparency and physical shapes of the model really work to your favor, and then you can worry less about the need for absolute precision. So ignore what I've just said, now it is time to worry about the need for absolute precision. I'm doing the white dot. Now I'm not using a white here, I'm using AK's ivory. And the most important thing for me in my mind at this stage is to pick something that flows really nicely. So you can pick something that flows really nicely, test it on my thumb, as you can see here, and get it to the stage where I'm gonna be able to do a little pinprick with a fair bit of control. So you want a small amount of very wet paint on the end of your brush that is gonna leave it nice and easily. So I can test out my polka dot skills here. And then very carefully, top back corner of this eye. You can put a little glowing dot. Now ideally this would be a line that's going that way to exaggerate, so you can play around with that, but um, one dot or two dots, just something suggesting that is a glass surface is the generally expected kind of norm that you'd be going for. So my first dot didn't go perfectly, so we're just going to cover it up. You don't need to worry about getting things perfectly right first time. It's not an issue, we're using acrylic paint here. It's a very forgiving medium, so I deleted one of those dots, I'm fine with that. And then equally, as I did with the null oil, you can make your Mephisto right into a glaze and semi-transparently kind of fix up any mistakes that you've got on the rest of the eye. Jumping back to the Fire Dragon Bright, I like more of a line going across the bottom of the eye. Way better. So that's made a really big difference to the overall effect. All right, and then because it's quite hard to imagine how this would look on a model, here is it on a model. So as you can see, the moment you've got two of these, and I always have one eye that's worse than the other, you can see here, this guy's got a, uh, a screw up on. Um, it really does make a big difference, and that point of light and a head tilt is all you need to kind of give your model the character that it requires to look like it's that little bit more alive. Obviously, it's a killing machine in space, but it's really, really helpful for kind of, um, just like it would do with anything, seeing the eyes of a figure or a model or a person is important for feeling an emotion and it really does make a huge difference if you can try it out. Okay, we're back to the whiteboard. I'm chopping my head off. Uh, so, Space Marine eyes. You can respect my amazing drawing skills yet again here. So this is a Space Marine's left eye, our right eye, looking at it. And I want to talk about your, your stages as you go through. So we're going to be achieving these uh, slightly strangely with washes and stuff like that. But broadly speaking, your first highlight is going to be here. So let's say this is my fist on red. This is going to be our first orange. Then your second highlight is going to be a brighter orange here. Your final orange highlight is going to be a bright, bright one there. So that'll be our fire dragon bright, or you can even mix some yellow in. And then when you come to the last step, simply your the difference between three and four is you're just putting a white dot here. Now you can put a white dot here and a white dot here, anything to suggest reflection, that type of thing, but these are the shapes that we're gonna be going through. So we're gonna be achieving this one by painting it with a fist on red and then washing it with null oil to fix our mistakes. We're painting this one by adding Wild Rider red. And then again, we can wash it with a fist on red to fix our mistakes, you'll notice a pan. This one will add Fire Dragon Bright. And then this one here, we're just gonna use two dots of white do this and at any point you can take your null oil or your Mephisto on red and you can push it this way with your brush like push it flow it towards that you'll have all of this area around here these are the recesses um, you can push it towards those it's fine um, it will be glowing around there any area in particular the black will end up black lining it and that will make it so it really doesn't matter if you make a mistake throughout this and you'll see in this tutorial I make at least three or four mistakes even though it's like a six step process so don't worry about it it's not intimidating it is super achievable and anyone can do it this way. Okay, we are done. So, again, so it's a small model to show this on. There we go. Um, it's really easy. Now, I just want people to hold in mind that if you make a mistake, that, that I wanted to include me making mistakes. Number one, because it's honest, I don't often get an eye right first time. In fact, I'm not sure if I have ever got an eye right first time. They make a real difference to how models look. And if you just know that you may well screw up, 
And if you do, it will be fine. I think that's a really important part of miniature painting. So um, working with transparency, working with the shapes and models, all the stuff I repeated throughout the tutorial is a fantastic thing just to know in the back of your mind that if things do go wrong, you can fix it. It's quite easy and it's just to be expected as part of the process. If it doesn't happen, that is a bonus, but you shouldn't let it kind of dishearten you or annoy you or something like that. Just a brush with a decent point. I used a size one and a size triple zero for this, but you could get away with using it up to a size three. It's all the point that matters. Um, and then some knowledge of the process is all you need to paint an amazing eye. So thank you very much for watching. I mean, if you like the video, please comment below. Uh, request for future ones. We're trying to kind of go through a lot of things that a lot of people find as useful as possible. It's about education, it's about learning. And if anyone's got some suggestions or criticisms or kind of like different ways that you approach doing an eye or a resource you use or kind of a, an inspirational picture that you've always got on. Like I use a tablet at the back of my painting table, for example. Um, I pop up things up there really big and I look at them and then try and emulate that um, on my model that I've got in front of me. Any tips like that would be amazing to know. We will pin them into the comment and can share them with the rest of the community. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.